Hi friends! Welcome to lesson number six in our Science as a Verb unit. We're going to talk here about unit conversions and how we're going to do them in chemistry. Here is a crotchety old man expressing his displeasure with having to use the metric system. Unlike him, science is going to require us to use the metric system as we have discussed previously. And so there may be situations where we need to convert between different units in the metric system and convert between non-metric units ugh, and metric units. So let's take a look at how that's done. The first thing that we should point out is that there are a lot of different kinds of units and you need to be able to go between them with ease. Here's King Henry giving all of the metric prefixes from kilo down to milli. You've probably learned this as something like King Henry does bake delicious chocolate milk or something like that. But the point is that you probably learned how to go between these units by using a method called the decimal slide method. I'm not going to hate on the decimal slide method. It's fine. I probably use it too from time to time, but I'm never going to use that in our class. To go between units in our class, we're going to use a slightly different method, which we're going to talk about and practice in this lesson. We should take some time and talk about the units that you can't convert between. So you can't convert between units that measure different properties. So if you were asked to convert 12 seconds into meters, that's not going to work. The reason for this should be obvious, but meters are a unit of physical dimensions and seconds is a unit of time. You cannot convert between any of the different base units. It's just not possible. That doesn't mean that you cannot combine base units into more complex units. So for instance, if John travels 12 meters in three seconds, we can figure out his speed expressed as meters per second. The way we would do this is divide 12 meters by 3 seconds in order to determine that John is moving 4 meters per second. Notice that in this case these two units have been combined into a more complex unit. This is something that you're going to see all over the place in chemistry. Some complex units are used so often that they are given their own names as a shorthand to keep them separate from the base units that might comprise them. We are always going to use a process called dimensional analysis when we convert in chemistry. The way we're going to do this is we're going to multiply any given quantity by a conversion factor. Here's what a conversion factor is going to look like. You're going to put the unit that you're converting from on the bottom, and you're going to put the unit that we're going to convert to on the top. You're then going to multiply the product of this term by the units that you start with in order to get the units that you're looking to finish with. It should be noted that for the purposes of calculations, conversion factors really generally are not factored in to gaining or losing precision in our overall answer or affecting the significant figures. The way I always deal with this is I just act like conversion factors have infinite numbers of significant figures and are infinitely precise. That is not really the case, but as a rule of thumb here in chemistry land where we're just trying to get by, it's totally okay to do that. You don't really need to worry about that, at least at the level of this course. Let's practice one. Here's a conversion from unit one, page 14. The question is how many millimeters are there in 630 kilometers? Take a moment and do it on your own and then let's see if we can do it together. You may have used the decimal slide method to do this and if you did, that's fine, but I'm telling you, we are always going to use dimensional analysis in order to get at this. Here's what this is going to look like. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to write down the unit that we were given, 630 kilometers with that decimal point indicating that that is a significant zero. We're then going to multiply it by our conversion factor. We're going from kilometers, so that goes on the bottom, to millimeters, so that's up on the top. We know that one kilometer is a million millimeters, so that's the equivalency that we express in our conversion factor. We're then going to wind up doing this math. Divide a million by one first, which is basically doing nothing, and then multiply that by 630. We'll get 630 millimeters. We know that that first zero is significant, so I've done that thing where I put that line over that zero to indicate that we do know it with certainty. If we want to put this in scientific notation, we're going to express it as 6.30 times 10 to the 6 millimeters. If that's a little scratchy for you, I would encourage you to go back to our scientific notation discussion and check that out, and then we can move on from there. Sometimes you're going to be dealing with units that you're not all that certain about. For that, I would direct your attention to reference table C. Reference table C is selected metric prefixes. It's not all of the metric prefixes, but it's all of the ones that you'll be expected to use at the regents level of the course. For each one, you're given the prefix and the symbol, which is then tacked onto the base unit symbol, as well as the factor that the base unit is multiplied by to turn it into one of those prefix units. It's a good thing to remember that if the factor is greater than one, that means that that unit is going to be larger than the base unit. And if the factor is less than one, that means that that unit is going to be smaller than the 
the base unit. This is particularly useful when setting up the equivalencies in the conversion factors like we did in the previous problem. Another great thing about conversion factors is that we can stack them together. We can put multiple conversion factors together into a problem as necessary. Here's an example of that from unit one on page 14. The question is, how much will it cost to buy four grams of ammonium nitrate if it costs $22.35 per kilogram? Here, we're gonna do multiple conversions. We're gonna go from our 4.0 grams, we're gonna convert that into kilograms, and once we know that, we can convert that into dollars using the conversion that we're given in the problem. Here's the first conversion factor. This is going to take that 4.0 grams and turn it into kilograms. Grams goes on the bottom, kilograms goes on the top. Here's our second conversion factor. That's gonna take our answer, which will then be in kilograms, and turn that into dollars. Dollars goes on the top, and kilograms goes on the bottom. I do the math in the parentheses first, I multiply everything together, and what I'll get is $0.089, which of course, given dollars, would probably round up to nine cents. Does this make sense? If it doesn't, take a moment, circle the parts that don't make sense, and make sure that you bring those questions with you to class tomorrow. We'll go over them together as a group. Here's another one that I'd like you to try on your own. I'd like you to convert 15 years to seconds. This is another multi-step problem, though it requires more steps. Here's the process that I would suggest you use. Convert from years to days first in your first conversion factor, then go to hours, then go to minutes, and then go to seconds. Write this out, do it at home, bring your answers with you to class tomorrow, and let's compare our answers and see if we all got the same answer or if we all got different answers. That's all that we have to talk about in this lesson. Make sure that you can do the following things as you take stock of whether or not you understand the material that was discussed in this video. The first thing is to be able to use dimensional analysis to convert between different units. The other thing that I'd like you to be able to do is be able to use multiple conversion factors and stack them together in series in order to convert from one unit to a unit many steps away from it. If you can do these two things without a problem, that's great. If not, don't worry about it. Just bring your questions, we're going to practice. And if you can't get your questions to me in class, don't hesitate to leave me a comment below this video or to get in touch with me through the information in the info field. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Take it easy.